One, two, three. Let me introduce myself, Rome's improvis improvisatore. Uh, one, two. Let me introduce myself, Rome's improvisatore, as I share the Virgil version of the Three Punic Wars. Boom, boom, boom. I play Virgil, the writer, who's basically a narcissist um, and uh, and a drunk, but he's a dreamer as well. Uh, but he has to bring, he has to bring everything back to himself. It, it was an epic grudge match. Carthage versus Rome, two superpowers sending their navies across the foam. I mean, you know, Virgil, the Iliad, it's hardly like carry on camping, is it? Do you know what I mean? But actually to take that and modernise it is genius. Oh, I've always wanted to do a posh rap. <laughs> All of the stories are about, really about transformation. And so the most fun part of this is watching the characters in this story transform into the characters from the Aeneid and then into their like most courageous selves. I'm Joe's wife, mightier than any other goddess, but still somehow I can't get what I want without throwing myself out of the sky. I ordered you to die Trojans, but you're still thriving. I, I play Sulpicia. Sulpicia is a poet. She is a fierce feminist, rebel, lesbian, sort of like wannabe pirate queen. <laughs> Why are you wearing your formal toga? I got it embroidered in Greece with lines from my early poems. Does Carthage rhyme with grudge? I know you're going to force it to. And Hades has no fury like a goddess born. So, so good. What a, what a night to finish So on. goddess voice. That's a perfect goddess voice. You have a goddess voice. Clear the way or be trampled by our pachyderm, Julia the Grey. I missed you, Opius. I might have missed you too, in between bouts of rage and grief. There is a lot of me I see in Opius. They are very complex, nuanced, um, really, really melodramatic and can burst into song at the drop of a hat. Dear Anna, I'm haunted by my history, tormented by past pain. If love can leave so easily, how can I trust again? Happy? Happy? Polly? Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, you can have it, sweetheart. Thank you. You can have it. <laughs> Do you want Chiron or Charon? I love those Karen. Well, I mean, I, I googled it, babe. Yeah. I googled it, and they said in English they say Karen. Yeah, you don't want to sound like Karen. Yeah, I know. Karen. <laughs> I, mean, I think the thing that makes the Ennead epic is that it takes in so many different themes and so many different ideas. All our recent poets prefer writing about female monsters to allowing women into any other portions of the plot. Uh, it chimed a lot with me, you know. That's how women get treated a lot. That's how LGBTQ plus people get treated a lot. And it, I just found that really interesting, all of these stories and all of this struggle for love. That their faithful shepherd might appear and he might be a little hot, 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 hot. Because of the way it's been studied and the way these poems have come through, they seemed like they didn't belong to everyone, but I think that they do. That's how I feel about all of these epics, is that they belong to all the people. I can't mount a horse myself. Oh! Oh! Authors are long dead, and the idea of these stories, for me, is that we should all find room in them, if we want to, to play. Or you'll be Cyclops' slave.